Good morning folks and welcome back. Uh, today I'm at the Pandam Reservoir again. I'll uh, spin it round, you can see it's behind me, for my next episode of cycling around Singapore. I think the last one, this is roughly well, where I got up to before the heavens opened and it started raining. So uh, I thought I'd come back, continue here, we're going to go around the Pandam Reservoir. It's about six kilometres all the way around. It's absolutely brilliant for cycling. And uh, then we're going to go down the canals and head up into uh, Jurong East. Uh, on today's video we're going to have a little chat about places that I've been on days out for free. Uh, the last episode was about things, paid excursions or paid days out. Uh, today it's going to be things I've done for free, the best places I've visited, uh, things you can do on your holiday, days out or a layover for free in Singapore. So I will just quickly show you the Pandan Reservoir and then we will set off on our way and we're going that way. Okay so the top things I've done on a day out I would say number one without a shadow of a doubt well I've done about a shadow of a doubt I would say number one Fort Solozo on Santosa Island it's a the World War II gun emplacement. They turned it into a military museum. It has uh, some of the original guns still there. And it's, uh, it's spread over quite a large area. You can uh, look at the guard house. There's uh, a little museum, sort of mock-up of how the soldiers used to live. And uh, I think we've been there a couple of times. Free to get into. And I would say definitely worth a visit. And while you're there, you can also see the rest of Santosa, go on the beach, have a swim in the sea, have a look at the uh, many cargo ships in the bay if you uh, if you like ship spotting, if that's a thing. Number two, Sungi Bollard Wetland Reserve. Again, it's. Uh, you can get there on the bus, it is quite a way, but you can get there on the bus. And you walk around the wetland reserve uh, and go crocodile hunting, spotting. We actually saw one the day we went. Uh, and you walk along in between the mangroves. And uh, yeah, it's quite good. It's quite eerie in places. You're sort of walking along and the slightest little rustle, and it's like, <gasps> is that one? And uh, yeah, we did see one. I think it was about a metre and a half long, the one we saw. They're, they're quite difficult to spot. And in places, you're very close to, uh, to the water, water's edge. And uh, there's other things to see there. There's wildlife, other, other animals. Let me just get part of this drilling. Always a bit of drilling going on somewhere. Yeah, there's plenty of other wildlife to look at while you're uh, wandering around. It's got nice long uh, walking paths. Um, yeah, good day out of that one. Number three, I have Chinatown and the mural hunting. Again, Chinatown, there's the big B Buddha tooth temple there that you can go in again for free. Can't take any pictures in there. Um, yeah, massive temple, one of the biggest ones I've been to. You can take a few pictures upstairs. Oh, see the otters have been out again. And the whole of Chinatown is so interesting. There's, there's loads going on. There's a mural hunting. I've done a video, a couple of videos that's good mural hunting. Mural hunting, I didn't say it. Um, yeah, where they painted the side of shops and buildings, various local artists. Um, yeah, good day out that is. And the next one, if you like a bit of weird and wonderful stuff, Horpa Villa. Um, the son of the man who invented Tiger Balm. He built this 
uh, I'd say model village with their full size of um, sculptures and animals all highly painted quite you know weird and wonderful Chinese sort of like Chinese proverbs and uh, yeah I was amazed it was free to get in there's a lot of renovation work going you know there's still and there's all sorts of weird things there's uh, there's a crab woman and uh, yeah there's just lots of strange things people being stabbed and <laughs> definitely uh, if you like the weird and wonderful I would definitely put that one on your list for a few hours um, but yeah when you go there you can turtle you feed the turtles as well that was quite good you buy a little bag of food in an honesty box and you can feed the fish and the turtles and so the day we went they very much appreciated it Next one, good old botanical gardens. Been there loads of times. When we first arrived, there was free concerts. Uh, I think it was a Christmas one. And in the in the, uh, in the staging area, and just in general, it's it's, it's such a well kept gardens. There's all different areas to it. You got like the ginger garden and the orchid garden. Uh, well, I think the orchid garden now is paid to get in. So, but when I went, it was actually free to residents and uh, long-term pass holders. But uh, again, the lakes—you can walk around the lakes, have a bit of, take a picnic with you, and uh, highly recommend. But the one not to miss. It's, I've been again been to a few botanical gardens around the world. And uh, that's one of the better ones. And on the same sort of theme is uh, the Rao Corridor. They've made, it's the train line that used to go from Malaysia, sorry, from Singapore to Malaysia, is now uh, a cycle path or a walking path. Uh, and I will actually do a cycle up there, I think. Not for not too long. Haven't been up there for a while. Definitely worth uh, another look. And of course, good old gardens by the bay. No, don't miss a trip to gardens by the bay. So, gardens by the bay. Go at night time, there's a light show. I think it's uh, 7.45 and 8.45 from memory. And they play music and the lights go. They do a uh, different one at Christmas um, and it's quite spectacular it's one not to miss and again there's so much happening in uh, the gardens by the Bay Area there's various sort of sculptures different areas there's a little India sorry there's an Indian garden and it's sort of a Chinese garden area again super well kept and uh, I can't remember what number we're up to, but I said my next one would be Little India. Again, spent a lot of time in Little India, plenty to look at, the smells of Indian cooking. Um, food's great down there. Yeah, some of the best food I've had in Singapore I've got from Little India without a shadow of a doubt. Food's really nice. If you're really brave, go to the Tika Centre. <laughs> for the uh, Indian hawkers and uh, again there's murals you can walk around and have a look at great place and uh, where are we? number nine I think we are Southern Ridges Walkway it's another you start off with the raised platform you can walk around above the seat line of the city and there's a bridge that goes over halfway you can see for miles on end, see right down onto the docks, see the whole of Singapore. Great photo opportunity if you're into sort of Instagramming and all that. And uh, oh, I should mention that like uh, Port Half Villa is meant to be one of the best 
Instagram spots in the country and there's various areas where you can stand there's a label on the ground you can stand there and have your Instagram photograph taken and uh, again good fun The last one I had, Civil Defence Heritage Museum. It's uh, all about firefighting across the years. Um, met a very nice man there, took us round. He used to be an ex-fireman. Spoke to him probably for about a good hour. Um, yeah, loads of original fire engines from the sort of late 80s, sorry, late 1800s. Uh, and this place is actually um, where they practice their rowing. There's Olympic, or well, a former Olympic rubber used to train here. Apparently, never saw them, but yeah. Anyway, where did we get up to? Yes, the Civil Defence Heritage Museum. They've actually just opened another bit about the Marine uh, Rescue Service, but I've not actually seen that yet, so again, that's another one. Probably have to go back to and have a second visit now that's open. Yeah, there's things you can have a go at. There's like a heat sinking camera. You can, uh, well, that was a big fish. A heat sinking camera you can stand in front of. And uh, there's sort of various things you can try. Like put your arms in sort of big gloves to see if you can operate a piece of machinery. And uh, yeah, definitely, you have to book it. I don't think it's open on a Monday. We had to book that one on the internet. Might be different now, restrictions have changed. But, uh, so there you go. I would say that's my top 10 of things to do in Singapore. On a day out, for free. And they're totally worth doing. So pick any couple of them if you've got a day or so and uh, you won't be disappointed. Right, I think I'm gonna leave this one here and uh, I'm gonna continue my cycle round and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.